Well, good evening, members. We are at the shop of Larry McFerrin now, and Larry's going to demonstrate some inlay techniques, stringing, sand shading, and lots of things that are typically done in federal furniture. So, Larry, take it away. Thanks a lot. Well, this project started with an article out of a uh, popular woodworking magazine. Uh, it's a federal style table and uh, it appealed to me and I thought it would be a challenge so I'm deep into the project and uh, no turning back no turning back and today we're going to demonstrate some of the techniques that are used now these techniques mostly came from Steve Latta and he has an excellent uh, series of DVDs on inlay and stringing and uh, and we have those in our library, right? They're in the library. Okay, good. And there's a few special tools uh, required to do this, or it makes life easier. Uh, most of them I have made, and they're copies of tools from Lee Nielsen. So, what do you want to start with, Larry? Well, the first thing we're going to do is uh, put some stringing in this leg, and we begin with uh, cutting the, the uh, grooves for the stringing and then we're going to cut the stringing and then we're going to fit it and then we're going to glue it in. This is a special little tool that I made and it's a copy of a Lee Nielsen tool developed by Latta and we're going to use it to cut the arcs for the stringing and it's uh, simply a tiny little saw blade so we'll begin with that. All right. You're just cutting an arc? Just an arc. All right. You try to go a uh, sixteenth or so deep? Yeah, approximately, yeah. Okay. We leave the stringing proud when we glue it in and then uh, we now, sand it down flush. Now all this, we may not be able to see it, but I can, I'll try to show the guys here. So you have you have a pencil line on there that you laid it out with pencil lines previously? Uh, I laid out where the ends of the arc are going to fall. Gotcha. And then the... Not the arc itself. Not the arc itself. But we can see your square line above it. So, okay. all right. Now the other two uh, arcs are going to be down in the body of the leg, and uh, in order to prevent jabbing a big hole in the leg with this compass, I've got a thin piece of plastic that I put on there. And we'll just scotch tape it down. Scotch tape is your friend. Scotch tape is your friend. And you've got a little bitty reference hole in the plastic. Well, it's for the pivot point. It's just uh, a hole that occurred from before. Uh, oh, okay. We'll just use the compass itself to gauge where that's going to be. Same procedure. Same procedure. Try to get things lined up here. You're scratching to a basic depth, lower sixteenth, and stringing generally, uh, once it's glued in, it stays up proud, correct? Yes, I uh, 
Cut it where it's proud, and then we'll sand it flush. Okay. So I'm not going to go ahead and do right. the other arc, but basically that's that's what we do. Okay. Then the uh, straight lines I've done with this plunge router base that I've set up. Okay. I probably won't let you start it up. We'll just show you how you... Or is it is it on? Yeah. Okay, well we'll do a little bit, if you're willing. Yep. You've got your fence reference a certain distance from the edge. And the depth is set. And the depth is set. Alright. down the whole line here. So you started down here. This looks like a uh, kind of a cuff. Is that what they call that? That's, at the bottom? That's the cuff. Yeah, I did that earlier. So you're going to have a cuff down by the lower part of the foot. And now you're just cleaning out the excess sawdust. Looks like. Cleaning out the sawdust. All right, let me zoom in on this, Larry. Here's the line made by the router. About an eighth of an inch away from the edge. Yes, and so how thick is your stringing, Larry, and what what bit do you use to it's, fit it's it in a, there? It's a 32nd. 1 32nd inch bit? 1 32nd. And are they, uh, is there such a thing as an up cut or a down cut spiral on uh, these? On something like this, it's not critical. This happens to be a upcut bit. Happens to be an upcut one thirty second. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'll uh, show you these uh, intersections in the corners. Sometimes you have to clean those out to get a good fit with the stringing. So I've got a matching gouge. So I'll come in here with the gouge. I see, and that matches the radius. Yes, and uh, then you can take this little tool I've got here and get out the corners. Because with the, uh, especially with that hand tool you used, you're generally going to, uh, you just can't get the depth all the way to a corner. Yeah, it's, it's pretty tough to get it a sharp corner, so... Right. So a little hand, little a hand work. A little hand work. That looks great. All right. This process is repeated, of course, till you have all the grooves done and you're and you have all the depth for the stringing. Right. Okay. The next task is going to be cut the stringing, and traditionally the stringing is holly because it's a white wood, but holly is practically uh, impossible to obtain. So I'm using this soft maple, which is uh, extremely white and it seems to stand up well so this is a little cutting board and with a guide on it and uh, this little tool I copied from Lee Nielsen it's a slicing gauge so I've got it set to cut the stringing to the proper uh, width it, this, this piece of veneer is a 30 second so it'll fit in my groove Okay, gotcha. You're not trying to go the whole distance at once. Well, my board's not long enough. Ah, okay. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because the thickness of the veneer has already been set. 
Yes. That's what goes in upright. Yes. So whatever you've sliced extra will just be sanded off later. Okay. Correct? Yes. Okay. So so there we go. There's our piece of stringing. Just like that. All right, you repeat that process till you have plenty of stringing for your for your project. Yes. And actually this stringing is a little bit thick fit in the groove. One thing I found out is you don't want a tight fit on that stringing in the groove because when the glue hits it, it'll swell up and you'll never be able to get it in. Okay. So I've just got a piece of sandpaper here on a block and uh, I'll just give it a couple of licks with this and it, it knocks the burrs off of it in addition to adjusting the thickness a little bit. Just like a metal worker, he thinks there's burrs on everything. <laughs> okay, so that should get pretty close. See, so I'm going to take my chisel and uh, put a little angle on that end to match the uh, angle of the corner so I just take this chisel and do a little chop like that ah you so you've back cut it at oh what looks like maybe 70 degrees there so that the string that's on that arch section will have a nice edge to it probably a nice connection so there we got that and that fit in there just the way you want it? Well, just, it's still a little tight, but I need to adjust it. So here, there. I'm going to run down the ring. It goes, so it's in at the top, and as we get down here by the cuff, it's just a little too tight to press in. Yeah. So you'll probably. It, it, it takes a little bit of fiddling. Right. Okay. Uh, I want to demonstrate uh, putting this circular piece in. It's a, it's a little bit tricky, and uh, we're going to have to let the soldering iron heat up just a, a few minutes. In order to get that stringing to fit in the, the curved arcs, it uh, goes a lot easier if you have it pre-bent. And so what I've got here is a soldering iron and then I put a sleeve on it to kind of match the radius of the bend. And so we let that thing heat up and we just work the wood across it. Wow, looks like it takes a set just instantly almost. Yes, it did. All right. So we got the wood pre-bent. Now we're going to uh, fit it into the groove. And uh, I don't try to miter these corners. I try to get a butt joint, but I uh, chop a little bevel on this to match the piece of string and that's already in there. And once again, you want that a little bit of a slip fit into the dado, correct? Y yes. Okay. And then I just rough cut this for right now. You're cutting it up 16th or so long. Yes. Okay. And there so you go. So basically, we've got it rough cut, and you just proceed with cutting the different pieces of stringing uh, as you go. And uh, so the next step in our process is I'm going to demonstrate uh, gluing it in. Sounds good. So uh, we're ready to glue the stringing in, and uh, I just use yellow glue for this. And I have a syringe that we inject the glue into the groove. You're not worried about getting anything outside of it. You just want to make sure you get it down in the groove. Get it down in the groove. A little... A little glue goes a long way here.
Is that some of your guitar makers accessories, Larry? This is Steve Latta accessory. Steve Latta. He's a pretty sharp cookie. That guy is amazing. So we've already pre-cut and pre-fit this stringing, so I'm going to try to get the corner up here nice and tight. And we're going to press it in. And you press it in and work your way down. Yes. Go over it a couple of times. And then I take a dowel or chisel handle or anything handy. Make sure that's mashed in there good. Okay. Little pressure. You don't want to fold over your stringing, do you? No. Then we'll take a this damp rag here and get some of the excess glue off. And I kind of work my way around on this stringing as I fit it, so the next piece we're going to put in will be this curved piece. So we'll glue this up right here. That's the smallest rolling pin I've ever seen, Larry. <laughs> it is, but it's for old men. Ah, understood. So that corner there turned out pretty nice. So I take it it's a, important to make sure you work work around in one from one direction. Uh, that's just my method. It seems like it works better for me. Okay. I guess if everything is pre-cut to fit, it wouldn't matter. But well, that way you can pre-fit one corner and then trim the opposite end to length. Right. In case there's some sort of variance that happens yeah. after you fitted one edge of the stringing. Now I might add, I do believe this is not, uh, this is not just a test leg. This is uh, No, this is a... Uh, this is the finished product we're working on. This is the finished product. These little things are so fine, it's kind of hard to tell where the bevel's been cut, but we'll put a little more glue in there. You feel like the soft maple is even wider than hard maple? Uh, is there such a it seems to be a little wider, yes, than hard maple. Okay. And down it goes. Yeah, just like that. It rolled in there nicely, didn't it? It did. Little wet rag, get rid of that excess glue. Now we gotta let that uh, dry and set in there a little bit, and then we just, uh, I've got a sanding block, we just sand that flush, and it's done.
It looks nice. Now, is this the next part of it up here, Larry? That's that. That will be the next part to do. Yes. Okay. And that's not going to be just stringing. It's going to be a little something else. I no, do this, believe. This is just stringing. Okay. Gotcha. The opposite or adjacent face has a a bookend inlay in it. Understood. All right. We'll let this glue up and get ready for the next section. All right, Larry, bookend inlay. That's it, huh? Yeah, this uh, table has a bookend inlay, and so I'm going to kind of demonstrate how we do that. And uh, this, this one is already cut and fit, but we start out with our strips. We cut on the cutting gauge to get to the proper width that will fit in the cavity we've already routed. You try to make them just, just almost identical in width? Yes. They're, they're pretty well balanced, so they, they fit in there nicely. So I like to do the sand shading on them before I trim the ends because uh, it can get kind of delicate when you do the sand shading. So we'll go over here and do the sand shading. All right. This is uh, simply a hot plate, a skillet, with some fine sand in it. Just playground sand? Just playground sand. You can get it at Hobby Lobby too, I think. So Hobby Lobby. They make a sand. That's so, fine. so we're going to bury the edge that we want to sand shade in the hot sand. I know you have some clippers there that are self-closing. Yes. <clears throat> that sand uh, is hot. Do we know how hot? How hot is your skillet? I don't, uh, hot as it'll get. Okay. Which actually uh, I, it would be better if I could get it hotter. But it would, this process would go a little faster. You got about a quarter inch deep sand in yeah, your skillet? Yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. You'll put it in there, and that's probably kind of the beauty of it. As you put it in the sand, each piece goes a certain depth, and maybe not the same depth at one end to the other, and it yeah, you gives can, it a natural look. You kind of pull the pieces out as, and see how you're progressing. Okay. I'll pull this one out. You can see it's just barely started to scorch so we'll put him back in yeah it was pretty light a very light gray it almost looked like a just a dirty piece of the wood there so um, a couple three minutes more like probably yeah on the whole process This must be what it's like to watch paint dry. It's kind of like watching wood scorch. Yeah, it is, isn't it? I like the looks. You could definitely vary it quite a bit. Vary the different depths in the wood. Yes. And different pieces of wood will shade differently, so you, it's kind of a trial and error kind of thing. Right. There's no set formula for how hot or how long. All right. Well, we'll let these cook up a little bit and we'll bring it back when they're just right, okay? Okay. Okay. All right. We're out of the we're out of the kitchen now, aren't we, Larry? We got our piece of sand shading. It took a little while, but it's uh yeah, not a real controllable process. You just kind of have to adjust it as you go. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is kind of trim the ends of this with a gouge. Uh, got a couple different size gouges to match the, the, the uh, radius on this thing. <clears throat> so I normally start out with the middle one. Now, is, are your gouges you're using wide enough to cut the whole width of each piece? Yes, they are. And that's probably important. 
uh, yeah, it, you get a much smoother cut that way. So we've got the middle one cut, and now I'm going to cut the outer end. We'll cut the outer end on the other one. good so I'm gonna recut it. We've got a little extra length. All right we're all cut to fit. So we've kind of got one end trimmed and I'm gonna put a piece of scotch tape on here just to hold things together. And then the next step in the process will be to do the same thing to the other end and get it to fit so that you end up with a deal like that and it's uh, scotch taped together. <clears throat> Use this size to excavate the cavity in the leg which we've already done in this one leg here. Use a combination the, the router that does the stringing We'll define the edges. Uh, once you've got the edges defined, you can lay your piece up here, put it, mark around it. Then I use a Dremel tool router to rough excavate the uh, cavity and also use these chisels to uh, cut the matching contours. And it, take, it takes a, a little bit of fiddling around, but once you get it uh, trim like that. You can also sand on this thing to get a final fit. So really that's what makes that inlay fit so well because you're using the same chisels that you cut the banding with uh, is you're cutting the outside edges of the mortise with it. Yeah. So it's a perfect match. They've got to match. Yeah. They've got to match up. Okay. So that takes away that mystery. Yep. Alright. So the next thing we're going to do uh, I'm going to show uh, how we cut the uh, banding for the cuff and maybe fit a piece or two of that. All right, we'll be back. Once the uh, stringing is complete, we can cut the uh, excess here uh, flush with the cavity for the uh, edge banding or the cuff. And I've pre made this cuff, it's actually two layers of wood. Uh, to get the uh, vertical grain and have a backer and then it's got a black white uh, stringing on each end. So I do miter the corners on this and I made this uh, sanding shooting board I call it and rather than use a plane I just use a piece of sandpaper glued onto a uh, my holder. And so we put this in the sanding board. So you end up with a nice okay, went right mitre. there. So yeah, you put a miter of is it 45 degrees? 45 degrees. Okay. Gotcha. So we're going to try to fit this in the get my pencil here. So you're going to fit the undercut of that 45 flush with the yeah, basically with your cuff mark there. It it requires some trimming as you go, but I'm just kind of trying to demonstrate the technique right here now. So I uh, rough mark the length on it and then we're just going to take our chisel here and 
rough cut it to length. And then we're going to sand the uh, miter on the opposite end. I normally leave these a little bit long and, and until I get a, the mating piece cut and you can always take more wood off. Use a little sandpaper to knock the burr off. So we got that piece roughly cut. Then we're going to sand the miter on the adjoining piece. I'm going to move this around so we've got more, uh, we can get to the thing. This little uh, bench I have, uh, is again, uh, Steve Latta came up with this. It was out of popular wood or uh, fine woodworking magazine, mm -hmm. and he uh, and came up with a deal so you can, if you grip on a tapered piece, it's a rocker, which works quite well on these tapered legs. So that's just some maple with a a dowel uh, halfway embedded into it. Yeah. And uh, you have enough taper, yeah. You can instantly adjust as you close the vise. So we'll take this piece here and and then we just fit the corners like that. We'll go all the way around. And you'll mark the underside with a pencil. Mark the underside with a pencil. And give yourself a little extra. Yeah. Put the same bevel on it and then slowly trim to fit as you go around. Yeah, the beauty of this uh, sanding jig is it's very controllable so you can go back and forth and just take a tiny bit off and, and end up with a perfect fit. All right sounds good we'll let you work on those and then uh, you'll be ready to glue them in. Well I have to finish all the stringing ah. on the other side before I glue them in so okay. we won't do that we won't take time to do that today. Not today okay very good. We'll be back. All right, we took a little bit of a break. We we're looking at the top of the table that Larry, uh, one of his first mock-ups here. And uh, we're going to show you the full view of the table, and Larry's got a few final comments. So go ahead, Larry. Well, we'll slip the top on here. Uh, I'm not totally pleased with this top. But this will give you an idea what it's going to look like. Uh, the remaining, some of the remaining woodwork is to do the drawer that goes in there, and uh, that gets uh, fancy wood and inlay and banding on it, stringing on it also. So that's going to be another real challenge. And we noticed the front of this is a bowed front. Isn't it? It is a bowed front. That complicates things even more. And this little bottom apron piece that I've kind of zoomed in on, uh, it is uh, all veneer work. Yes. I'll put a little bit of uh, paint thinner on that, make the grain pop so we'll get an idea what it's going to look like. Now besides showing off the work here, 
Is that a good idea to do that if in case you have, uh, you're worried about any extraneous glue yes, that might be on your project? A glue spot will show up when you do that, so it is a good idea. Immediately, and then you can you get it sanded or planed off, correct? It's a lot easier to do before you put the finish on. I can imagine that. All right, Larry. We'll get over there by your table. I'll take one final shot there. And uh, we want to really appreciate your work here. Uh, your table looks beautiful, uh, and we're looking forward to see the final project when you bring it in. Well, we've still got a ways to go, but we are making progress on it. I think it'll be pretty wonderful, uh, but if you don't mind, at this point, I'd like you to leave the room because we need to vote on the membership if you're worth uh, care, uh, keeping in the membership for another year or two, because this project's a little shoddy. <laughs> well, it, it's my first one. First one. We might give you a little slack. All right. Thanks so much.